So now we have a pH curve and we need to analyze the curve to be able to do the stoichiometry. So let's take an example of this. It's a similar kind as our animation. We have a strong acid and a strong base. We get this shape and now we need to know what to do with it. Um, so let's just take a look at the parts of the pH curve. First off, you're given um, this region where pH really didn't change much. Okay. Um, a part of the graph, the beginning part of the graph, where the hydrogen ion was dominating and uh, the hydroxide kept turning into water, so it was the hydrogen ion uh, focusing the pH. We call that area right here the buffering region. And the buffering region is the part of the graph where really there is no change in pH, and that's what buffers do. They manage pH changes and keep them very uh, slim. And you'll learn more about buffers in Chem 30. Um, at, at the middle part here, if you recall, the middle of the vertical region of the graph, this is where we have um, the, end point, uh, the end point of the reaction, and this is called end point. And when we use an indicator, that's when we see a color change. But the end point of the reaction is when the moles of acid equal the moles of base. That's where we can do our stoichiometry. So at that point, we call it the equivalence point, and the equivalence point is specifically when the moles of acid equal the moles of base. Okay, and when the moles of acid equal the moles of base, I can get the volume of sodium hydroxide that was required to reach that end point. So right here, I drop my line down as best I can, okay, and I can see, well, that means 50 milliliters of sodium hydroxide was required to reach the equivalence point as seen by the end point, which would be indicated by an indicator. And at the end, now, is no longer a buffering region, it's flat, but all it's signifying is that we have excess titrant. So those are the parts of the pH curve that you need to know, okay? We have the buffering region at the beginning, we have the end point where the equivalence point has been reached, where moles of acid equal moles of base, and then at the end we have our excess titrant. So let's take this uh, data and find the concentration of HCl, because that's what we'd be looking for in this particular pH curve. So it's stoichiometry, so we have to start with a balanced equation as usual, and in this case it was hydrochloric acid reacting with sodium hydroxide, Okay, to produce H2O liquid and sodium chloride solution. Okay, and we were taking the pH, we saw the uh, 7 pH, knowing um, that that's where our, we reached our equivalence point. We were given our uh, volume of HCl, if you uh, look back, the volume of HCl in the graph said 10 milliliters. So I'm going to write that here. So 10 milliliters was titrated, sorry, 10, 10 milliliters was pipetted, I should say, into the Erlenmeyer flask. Okay, if we look back here, we can see we had a concentration of sodium hydroxide of 0.15 moles per liter. So the concentration here is 0 0.15 moles per liter. Right, and the question really would be asking, what is our concentration of hydrochloric acid? Now, obviously, to solve this, we need to know the moles of sodium hydroxide, so I need to know the volume. That's, remember, what we get right here, our equivalence point where moles of acid equals the moles of base. It's the 50 milliliters dropped down from the end point that is our volume of sodium hydroxide. So I'll put that information here, 0 0.0500 liters. So this is a simple solution stoichiometry question. I, I can find the moles of given by going 0 0.15 moles per liter times the volume of sodium hydroxide, 0 0.0500 liters. That's our moles of sodium hydroxide. Multiply it by the ratio of required over given, 1 mole HCl to 1 mole NaOH. Don't forget your mole ratio. Okay, and now we need to... Um, get our concentration of hydrochloric acid. We're at moles here, so I'm going to be multiplying by the ratio of 1 over 
0 0.0100 liters. Okay, and that will get me my concentration in moles per liter of HCl, and that works out to be 0 0.75 moles per liter HCl. Okay, so a pH curve can get you information so that you can solve for the concentration of an unknown acid or base.